Let's start by watching this clip from Narcos with subtitles. Then we're going to break it down for you to learn key vocabulary. And finally, you'll watch the clip again without subtitles to find out how much you've learned. Una guerra entre nosotros es lo último que necesitamos en este momento. Parece que voy a andar peleando una. Igual te pasaste un poco poniendo una bomba ese avión. Ojo, Pacho. Ojo que nosotros con el gobierno lo único que tenemos son algunas diferencias. Y eso se resuelve rapidito. Además, pues son negocios. Los de todos. Exactamente, los de todos. Uh -huh. La única guerra que nosotros sí estamos luchando es en contra de la extradición. Y esa nos interesa a todos, ¿cierto? Cierto, Gustavo. Y los Estados Unidos es lo suficientemente grande para todos. Vamos a arreglar lo de Los Ángeles. Cuando ustedes solucionen sus problemas acá. Sabe lo que me molesta a mí? Su arrogancia. Su actitud de superioridad. O, oh, Pacho, que no lo vayan a quebrar por eso. Muchas gracias por venir. Una guerra entre nosotros es lo último que necesitamos en este momento. Una guerra entre nosotros es lo último que necesitamos en este momento. En este momento means literally at this moment, which is the same as right now. The preposition en has different uses depending on the context, but it's commonly translated into at, on, in, and by. In this case, en este momento, it was used to indicate time, but it can also be used to indicate a location. If we go to the Fluent U video dictionary, we can easily find an example. Pues nada, estáis aquí en Biscuit. Or en can indicate a mean of transport, as in... Siempre que viajo, en carro o en tren. Parece que vos ya andas peleando una. Parece que vos ya andas peleando una. Vos ya andas peleando means you are already fighting. As you may know, vos is a synonym of tú used throughout some locations in Latin America, like Argentina and Nicaragua. When verbs are used after vos, they are of course conjugated in the second person form, but are not exactly the same as when used after tú. Usually, the only thing you need to do is adding an accent to the last syllable of the tú verb, as in this example, whereas you would normally say Tú ya andas peleando. When using vos, you would actually say vos ya andas peleando. Andas versus andas. But some verbs require a bit more effort, like the verb tener. Whereas you would normally say tú tienes, when using vos, you'd say vos tenés. So you'd not only add an accent, but also drop the i in tienes. The adverb ya, also pronounced ya, yeah, means now or already. And andas comes from the verb andar, which is most commonly translated into to go or to walk, but in this context works as a synonym of estar. So, vos ya andas peleando means you are already fighting. Igual te pasaste un poco poniendo una bomba ese avión. Igual te pasaste un poco poniéndole una bomba a ese avión. Igual often means equal or the same, but colloquially it can be translated into maybe. Here are some examples from Fluent You. Estate atento porque igual sacamos alguna que tengas cerca. Ay, igual no soy tan buen abogado. Another colloquial use of igual that is said all the time is as an equivalent of anyway. For example, no quiere decir yo voy igual and te pasaste un poco literally means you passed a bit. But this is actually a colloquial expression referring to going over a limit or taking a step too far. Ojo, Pacho. Ojo, Pacho, ojo, literally means I, but the same word is used as an interjection to call someone's attention regarding something. So, ojo, in this context, can be translated into watch out, be careful, or pay attention. If we go to Fluent U, we can see more examples. Ojo. Pero ojo, una distorsión es de hecho inevitable. No, oh, ojo, ojo. Evolución no significa mejor, significa cambio. As you can see, watching native videos is not only fun, but it helps you internalize real world Spanish so you can start using it confidently. The only issue with watching native videos out there is that not all of them have subtitles, 
so it can be quite challenging to understand every word. And even if you do, you may need to go back and forth to take meanings on a dictionary, which can be too distracting and even confusing at times. But FluentU is a very fun and effective way to learn authentic Spanish. It features a giant catalog of real-world videos, from Netflix clips, to music videos, to TED Talks. And as you watch them, you can click on words to quickly check meanings and get other example clips where they're used, so you never get lost. Plus, FluentU creates personalized quizzes based on your target vocabulary, so you retain everything you learn. Click the link in the description and try it for free for two weeks. Ojo que nosotros con el gobierno lo único que tenemos son algunas diferencias. Ojo que nosotros con el gobierno lo único que tenemos son algunas diferencias. Be careful here because con typically means with, but it can also be translated into in spite of. So you could use it to say either voy a la fiesta con mis amigos, I'm going to the party with my friends, or Con todo lo que he vivido, sigo siendo optimista. In spite of all I've been through, I remain optimistic. Also be careful with diferencias. It is usually translated into differences, but is used here to indicate a controversy or disagreement among people. Y eso se resuelve rapidito. Y eso se resuelve rapidito. Se resuelve means literally, it resolves itself. One of the uses of the pronoun se is to talk about an action without specifying who performs it, just like when using the word uno, one, to talk in a general impersonal way. And resuelve is a present conjugation of the verb resolver, to resolve or to solve. So the expression se resuelve actually means one resolves or one can solve. Además, pues son negocios, los de todos. Además, pues, son negocios, los de todos. Además, can be translated into besides, furthermore, moreover, also, and other synonyms. It's basically a linking word used to introduce new information. For example, el vestido es lindo y además es barato. And no quiero ir. Además, tengo mucha tarea. Exactamente lo de todos. ¿eh? La única guerra que nosotros sí estamos luchando es en contra de la extradición. Exactamente, los de todos. Ajá. La única guerra que estamos luchando es en contra la extradición, que, in this context, means that or which. So it's used here as a relative pronoun to refer to la única guerra, the only war. This que links the main section of the sentence with the following, which is a relative clause. En contra means literally in opposition to, but can be translated into against. But when used by itself, it can also be translated into on. For example, recosté mi espalda contra la pared. I leaned my back on the wall. Y esa nos interesa a todos, ¿cierto? Cierto, Gustavo. Y esa nos interesa a todos, ¿cierto? Cierto, Gustavo. Cierto means literally certain. But when used between question marks, it's used to ask if a prior affirmation is actually true. Just like how you'd ask, right? In English. If the answer to the question is affirmative, you could either say si sí, es cierto or use a Georgia version of this by simply responding cierto. Both expressions mean you agree with what was said, so they can be translated into that's right or it's true. Y los Estados Unidos es lo suficientemente grande para todos. Y los Estados Unidos es lo suficientemente grande para todos. Suficientemente means literally sufficiently. But when preceded by the pronoun lo, meaning it, and then followed by an adjective as grande, big, in this case, the phrase lo suficientemente is used to indicate if the adjective is enough or not for a certain purpose. For example, Tras seis minutos de sufrimiento, lograron llegar lo suficientemente profundo hasta despejar su rostro. La clave es que durante la pasión romántica se construyó un lazo lo suficientemente fuerte. Suficientemente is an adverb that comes from the adjective suficiente, also meaning enough. As it ends with a letter E, it's considered an adjective with a neutral gender. And this can be easily turned into adverbs by simply adding the suffix mente, which is the equivalent to the English suffix li. If you want to review these phrases later, we've prepared a free PDF. Click the link in the description below. Vamos a arreglar lo de Los Ángeles. Cuando ustedes solucionen sus problemas acá. Vamos a arreglar lo de Los Ángeles 
cuando ustedes solucionen sus problemas acá. Vamos means we go and the preposition a after this verb usually means to. But vamos can be also used in an imperative way just like how let is used in English. In this way, it suggests to someone else to go and perform an action with you. Arreglar means literally to fix, but in this context it refers to the action of figuring out or getting an issue sorted out, as in, for example, Gracias por ofrecerme ayuda, pero me las puedo arreglar sola. Thank you for offering help, but I can figure it out on my own. Then the phrase lo de usually means the issue about. So in this context, vamos a arreglar lo de actually means let's figure out the issue about. Finally, acá is just a synonym of aquí, meaning here, and it's typically used in locations where vos is used instead of tú. ¿Sabe lo que me molesta a mí? ¿Sabe lo que me molesta a mí? Sabe is the present conjugation of saber, to know, both for the formal second person, usted, and the third person, él or ella. In this case, where Pablo is addressing Facho, it may sound like he's using sabe to talk to him in a formal way. But in some places like Colombia, the use of usted is not exclusively formal. They also tend to use it among friends, family, and even romantic partners. A mí lo que me interesa es que usted esté feliz con usted misma. Su arrogancia. Su actitud de superioridad. Su arrogancia. Su actitud de superioridad. Actitud de superioridad means literally attitude of superiority. The preposition de is used all the time in Spanish, and it typically means of or from. It's commonly used to express possession, indicate origin, or indicate a characteristic. For example, la boda de mi amiga. Soy de Uruguay. Una mesa de mármol. Uh, pacho. Que no lo vayan a quebrar por eso. Ojo, Pacho. Que no lo vayan a quebrar por eso. Que no lo vayan a quebrar means literally that you don't get broken by them. Que is also used as a relative pronoun here, meaning that, and it links the two sections of this subjunctive sentence. Vayan is the subjunctive form of the verb ir, to go, in the third person plural, so it can be used to express a doubt or a recommendation regarding actions performed by others. And it's preceded by the pronoun lo, which is commonly used to refer to a third person, but also to refer to a second person in formal speech, when the pronoun usted is used. So in this case, lo actually means you or yourself. This way, lo vayan refers to the possibility of getting yourself done something by others. Finally, a quebrar means literally to break. But in some locations, like Colombia, quebrar is colloquially used to refer to killing. So the whole subjunctive sentence may sound like a recommendation, but reading between the lines, we can tell it is more of a threat. Una guerra entre nosotros es lo último que necesitamos en este momento. Parece que voy a andar peleando una. Igual te pasaste un poco poniendo una bomba a ese avión. Ojo, Pacho. Ojo que nosotros con el gobierno lo único que tenemos son algunas diferencias. Y eso se resuelve rapidito. Además, pues son negocios. Los de todos. Exactamente, los, los de todos. todos. La única guerra que nosotros sí estamos luchando es en contra de la extradición. Y esa nos interesa a todos, ¿cierto? Cierto, Gustavo. Y los Estados Unidos es lo suficientemente grande para todos. Vamos a arreglar lo de Los Ángeles. Cuando ustedes solucionen sus problemas, acá. Lo que me molesta a mí. Su arrogancia. Su actitud de superioridad. Oh, Pacho. Que no lo vayan a quebrar por eso. Muchas gracias por venir. To keep learning Spanish with series. Check this next video and find out which are the best Netflix series to learn Spanish. We'll even watch some excerpts from each of them, which will be a great opportunity for you to hear different Spanish dialects. Don't miss it out!